How's it going everyone, Foxy here. This video is going to be a little bit unusual compared to what I would normally make, but I was having a very long, about four hour conversation with a group of friends, and we were talking about like the current state of gaming as a whole, trends that we don't really like, or just questionable things that developers would do. And the more that we would talk about this stuff, the more I wanted to make a video about this sort of subject. You may not agree with all my views, or really any of them for that matter, and that's fine. We're all entitled to our opinions. All I ask is that you understand where I'm coming from and just hear me out. That's it. There will be swearing, and probably a lot of it, because I will be ranting more than likely throughout 90% of this video. So children and people who don't like rant style videos, you have been warned. I have a lot of things I want to say, and I'm fully expecting this to be about 10 to 15 minutes long, so let's not take up any more time and get started. The first thing I want to talk about is the fear I have that more games are going to be online only or multiplayer only to be more specific. Games that fall into this category are like Titanfall, MAG, and SOCOM Confrontation. Multiplayer only games have a very limited shelf life because if the games don't do well and not many people play it, what's the point in spending the money to keep the servers alive? Both MAG and SOCOM had their servers shut off a couple years ago which makes the games virtually unplayable. Funny thing is that I went to Walmart a month or so ago and they were still selling both of these games for I believe around 30 to 40 bucks. Yeah. Eventually the servers will get shut down with Titanfall once the player base shrinks, and then what do you have? Nothing but a box with a disc inside, and memories I guess. If these games had some sort of offline mode against bots, I would not be complaining at all, but they don't. Some of you may be saying, ah, oh, that's okay, I don't play older games anyway, or something along those lines, and that's fine, but not everyone is like that. Most people enjoy playing older games, whether it be because they never got a chance to play them in the first place, or for nostalgia. I mean, hell, I still play Symphony of the Night and Final Fantasy Tactics from time to time because they're fucking great games. That's what I fear will end up happening at some point. More online-only games without any sort of offline modes. It may not happen, it probably won't, especially if people bitch long enough but it's still something that I worry about from time to time. Next is arguably the most important thing on my list. Game companies releasing unfinished products. I say unfinished in the sense of it being like incredibly buggy upon initial release or just flat out broken in some areas. I'm not talking about games like Forza 5 or Destiny where you can make valid arguments that certain aspects of the games felt unfinished. I'm talking about games like Battlefield 4 and Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5. Both of these games, again, when they were released, were just flat out terrible. Battlefield was plagued with frustrating lag and rubber banding due to their shit netcode, plus they had some sound and graphical bugs, which of course is not nearly as big of an issue. After I think three months, give or take, they finally fixed most of the problems with Battlefield 4, but that's a pretty long time to fix something that either should not have ever been an issue in the first place, or should have been fixed within the first few weeks. As far as Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5, you know the moment you put in a game on launch day and it has an almost 8 gig patch, you know you're in for some trouble, and it turns out we were. The game is barely playable, but if you want to hear more about that, listen to this guy's review of the game, it's way more in depth than I could ever fit into this video. Look, I get it. Game companies want to release their games as soon as possible. But don't you think if you took more time polishing stuff over, making sure that everything is as perfect as it can get, you can avoid shit like this? Think of it this way. If my first impressions of a game are terrible, why would I ever want to go back to it a couple months later to see if all the problems are fixed? Think of it like a restaurant. Okay, you go in there, you have a terrible experience, service was shit, Food was barely edible, basically nothing was good. Are you ever gonna go back? Of course not, unless you're some sort of masochist. Which I am, but that's not really the point here. You have one chance to make a good first impression, maybe two if someone is willing to give you a second chance. But you can't guarantee that half or even a quarter of these players will. 
people don't want to spend 60 bucks on the game that's going to turn out to be a broken mess only to wait however many months until it's fixed. And hey, by that time it's possibly fixed, the game will only be worth half of what you originally paid. This is part of the reason I do not pre-order games anymore. Well, that and my track record for pre-ordering games is just flat out fucking abysmal, but I digress. Anyway, since I got on the subject of pre-orders, that brings me to my next somewhat brief subject, pre-order incentives. Back then, these weren't that popular. I mean, they still had them. However, the pre-order incentives were mostly for AAA titles like Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, and I think Crisis 3 had one as well. As of now, game companies put incentives on most AAA titles or otherwise. I have some friends who flat out fucking hate them, and others who like them. I'm kinda in the middle because I'm one of those dickheads who goes into GameStop, puts $5 down on a pre-order for a game, I know eventually I'll buy at some point, and then a week later cancel my pre-order just so I can keep that DLC code or whatever that pre-order bonus is. I guess I just don't understand the hatred for incentives. Maybe there are people out there that get swayed that much by some shitty micro DLC enough that they're willing to pre-order a game. I have no fucking idea, but here's the thing. Most of the time, these pre-order incentives end up being on the store at launch or a month later after the release of the game for five bucks or under, sometimes even less than two bucks. And usually the incentives are very minor things like a weapon skin, a bonus map, in-game money, or whatever. I have never heard someone blow a wad or cream their coffee over pre-order DLC. Have you? I would go on with a rant about micro DLC, but it's been so done to death. And at this point, I think we all know it's not going to end anytime soon, so what the fuck is the point? That brings us to digital games and my problem with them, at least on console. Let me make myself clear, I'm a physical media kind of guy, for the most part. For PC gaming, I don't give a shit either way because I do not collect PC games. Regardless of that, digital games can take up a pretty good amount of hard drive space. I'm sure we all know that, and it's a common complaint that people have. Why they complain about something like this, I have no idea. I think it's a fairly common sense thing, that it would take more space than a disc, but whatever. The big issue for me is that they rarely, and I mean rarely, lower the price of these games. Yes, they do have occasional flash sales and things like that. That's completely different. I'm talking about just the normal price of a digital game. Can you explain to me why a game like Anarchy Reigns costs 20 bucks on the store, but at GameStop it's 5? How about a much more popular franchise, Assassin's Creed? Every single one of these games is 25% to at most, I think, 75% cheaper buying at GameStop. For my last and most offensive example, I went to the filter bar and clicked on games with the oldest release date. Then I came across Warhawk. You can buy it now from the PlayStation Store for $29.99. What a bargain you must be saying. You know how fucking much this game is actually worth? A dollar. A dollar. What am I supposed to say at this point? The thing is, like, 98% of these games on the store are way more expensive than what you can get at GameStop or even Amazon, and you must be saying, yeah, but it's a used copy. Okay, and? Unless you are getting something out of buying a new copy, like a DLC code, an online pass, whatever, then who fucking cares? A vast majority of my games are used because if they weren't, not only would they have cost a significant amount more and make me a very broke man, but also because in the grand scheme of things, it makes no difference used or new. The only thing I care about in a used game is that the case isn't fucked, and it comes with the manual and whatever else it's supposed to have. If by chance I buy a game that is scratched and doesn't work, alright, you know what I do? I return it and get another copy or my money back. That's it. It's that simple. So with that lovely rant out of the way, it brings me to my next topic collector's editions and the prices the companies try to charge for them. As a collector myself, I will pick up some of these from time to time, but not if they're not worth the price to me. A few of these collector editions I own are Death Smiles, Little Big Planet 3 Plush Edition, uh, Blaze Blues Continuum Shift Extend, a couple Call of Duty Hardened sets, and a few others I got because they weren't expensive. And I'm a fan of the games enough that I would be willing to spend a little bit extra. 
with the exception of Blaze Blues and Death Smiles, which I got for dirt cheap at a flea market, but regardless. If I'm a fan of a game, a franchise, or a series, whatever, I don't mind spending just a little bit more on a collector's edition if it's worth the money. So, do they charge these high prices for collector's editions because they have cool stuff in them that makes it worth the price? Or is it because blind fanboys and girls will just buy whatever is labeled as a collector's edition for a franchise they love? It's a question I don't really know the answer to, this is just my opinion. But I don't care what game it is, or what it comes with, there's no fucking way on earth that I would ever be willing to spend more than half of what my PS4 or Xbox One cost just for one game. In fact, you know what, let's talk about the Halo 5 Limited Edition set and its Collector's Edition. In the Limited Edition, you get quite a bit of stuff. Obviously the game in a lovely Limited Edition packaging, the Steelbook case, some DLC, Halo animated series, and I'm not sure if that's a DLC code or physical disc. I'll assume it's digital. You also get some paperwork that you'll probably only read once and never again. And what I'm assuming is just a steel model of a guardian? Okay, for a hundred bucks, that's perfectly fine. I mean, it's only 40 bucks more, so whatever. Most games have their limited edition sets ranging from 80 bucks to 150, so a hundred bucks seems like a good deal to me. Having said that, Let's jump to the Collector's Edition. There are two things different about this edition besides the big, massive box. You get a quote, commemorative statue of Master Chief and Spartan Block, and I'll admit, from the screenshot, the statue looks quite good. The coloring looks great, the detailing is also very well done. You want to know the other thing that you get, or, well, don't get, a fucking physical copy of the game. Instead, you get a digital code to download it from the store. May I ask why? It costs next to nothing to produce a disc, especially if you are mass producing one. It ends up costing less because you're doing it in bulk, like a wholesale. Is this an attempt to save money? I call bullshit on this. There's no fucking way it's that. Yeah, alright, sure. The developer decided after fans bitched enough about it to give you the option to swap out the digital code for a disc. That's cool and all, but it doesn't make up for the fact that someone greenlit this in the studio. You mean to tell me that you make this collector's edition, which by the way, the thing cost 250 fucking bucks, which is not a small amount of money, and you thought it was okay to not have a physical disc? I'm sure some viewers are wondering why this annoys me so much, and you know what, maybe it shouldn't, but you can't say this is not stupid. Plus, is it not weird to anyone else in the world that this statue technically cost an extra $150? I mean, it's nice and all, but $150 nice? I don't know about that. Halo 5 wasn't the only one to do something like this. Heroes Might of Magic 7 released a collector's edition that on the screenshot shows a physical disc for the soundtrack as well as a physical disc for the game. In its release, they decided to replace those for digital codes and fans were pissed and rightfully so. I realize this isn't exactly the same situation, but it's still bullshit either way. And yeah, you can say, well, Foxy, you don't have to buy it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I don't have to buy it, and neither do you. That's not the point I'm making here. Collector sets are fine. If you want to spend 250 bucks on a Halo set or whatever else, that's your prerogative. Have fun with that, but the developers should not take shortcuts and be lazy about it. With the Might and Magic game, don't promise something and not deliver. With Halo, don't give us a digital copy on a $250 fucking dollar collector edition of a game, especially when the limited edition has a special physical case. Maybe it's just me, but I do find that very insulting. Alright everyone, I'm gonna end this video in just a moment. I did have more things I wanted to point out, but if I don't stop now, I don't think I ever will. So I just want to thank you all very much for watching. And if you have anything you want to say about any of these subjects, topics, whatever that I talked about, then by all means comment below. And if you'd like to discuss them with me, then go right ahead. I check my comments regularly, or at least I try to. Remember, these are nothing but my opinions. We all have them, and they are all different for the most part. There's absolutely no sense getting mad when someone else doesn't like something you do or disagrees with your opinion. So until next time, everyone, thank you all very much for watching, and take care.